just on time about to enter the restaurant AOC. It's actually located in a historical mansion. It's dated back to 17th century. Can't wait to try my dinner. I'm super hungry. Let's go. Hi everyone, welcome back to Channel Speed. This is another food video. I traveled to Copenhagen. I booked this restaurant like a month ago for AOC. It's, it was located in the basement of 17th century vault. I like their design. It's very simple, very spacious. Seven fours and a And usually it's wine pairing. Because I don't drink alcohol, they give me this juice pairing menu. Quite interesting. Maybe I'll try it. So if you go with five glasses, it's 650 grams. And seven glasses is 850 grams. The tasting menu, you can see that there are a lot of seafood on it. Like caviar, oyster, raw shrimp, scallops, well, bread. It's very difficult to choose. I ask them to explain it to me. Usually in that menu, they come with like choices. So this is like what? 11 quarts? Nineteen horses. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. I've never tried the juice pairing because usually I feel like you know it's just juice. <laughs> Since I'm already here, right? okay. Seven glasses. Thank you so much. Must be good. It's a 19 course dinner. But the first five is snacks. I figure since I'm here, why don't I just go with everything? So I chose the seven glasses of the juice fairy. Better be good. We'll see. It's our crispy potato with loafage and fender soup. My first snack is crispy potato and fender soup. It's a very nice way to also dinner because the crispy potato is very thin and when you bite it, the crust is going to work so it's going to go the seafood. For your next dish, you have our crispy potato. In time we try out, there is a, a tartar made from shrimp. The tartar has been mixed with a bit of tomato, dill, and shallots that has been pickled in a crown of vinegar. This is my second dish. Raw shrimp with roasted bread. It's like a cookie. Oh, it's super good. Very thin layer. And then there's mushroom in the middle of the shrimp. The salt is super fresh. It's a little bit of the dill. It just brings out the taste of the shrimp. Build it on top of the previous crispy potato. Oh my god, it's super good. It's like bring you to the ocean. That kind of thing. Next up is the mussel bun. It's a deep fried steam bun where we incorporate the mussels into the dough. We fill it up with a bit of the fresh. On top, you have a fresh Icelandic sea urchin glazed in a tom shotsu and reduced tomato water. On top of that, um, salted trout roll and a grated, dehydrated sea urchin. They're so well done. See, on top is sea urchin some rolls. And they asked me to eat it at one bite. It's so good. The sea urchin and the roll on top, when you bite it in one bite, the juices and the buns, they just Clash it together. The previous course bring you to the sea, and this one take you to a ride in the ocean. Say hi. Hello. <laughs> Our uh, crispy beetroot uh, tartare, make it from uh, red beetroot puree. Afterward, we add in the bottom a parfait, made it from foie gras and the chicken liver, some fresh herb as a wood sorrel, basil flour and the cherry. And to finish, I will add some drops of uh, balsamico vinegar from uh, Modena, Italy. Oh, this Aged, one? Yes, exactly. 100 years. That's the best. Yeah, it is. Not because I'm Italian. Thank Enjoy. you. It's so pretty, it's like a flower. It's so mouthy of words, but it's super, super, super good. I don't know what's on the beet. What, what is on the beetroot? The shell is made with beetroot, then inside you have a flat bit, probably chicken heart, a little bit of it. A little bit of fogo. A little bit. Oh, I see, no wonder. And then uh, they have some sorrel. Oh, 
Oh, that's so nice. I love it. So the beetroot is just on the outside, and they have some chicken liver and a little bit of crava outside. No wonder it tastes in such a rich taste. So we chop back from the seed to the land already. And then we have the 100 year old Moderna vinegar. One more cheese cracker, sweet truffle cream, and some sliced winter truffle from France on the Perigold truffle. On top of all that, there is a layer of caramelized milk. Do you know the history about the book? book? Oh, the, 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 the idea behind it too is to make a lemonade, but just a Nordic lemonade. So instead of uh, using lemon juice, you use some garden sorrel. Garden sorrel is a herb. We have a lot of it in Denmark. have a pretty high acidity. Then we put some pine inside because there's so much pine here. And a little bit of cucumber give the vanilla to, to the juice. Oh, nice. It's a Nordic version of lemon. It's really strong. Juice. Very fresh. I'm probably the, one of the few people who actually order juice berry. Caviar. It's coming from, uh, I'll put it here quickly for a picture. We got all the caviar from Wissi. He's a Danish importer and he takes this one from China. From China? From China. It's part of China. It's a Caspian Sea. Caspian Sea. No, it's uh, sustainably farmed and it's a hybrid between two more famous sturgeons. He made this one from it, that's less salt than usual, a bit less. It's 3.5%. Underneath in the dish is fermented gooseberries and sorrel, blended with a thyme oil and then two types of wild herbs on top called chickweed and pork. First dish. It's very the modern. And black label caviar, they said they imported it from China. It's a hybrid. So now I understand why it's very with this, this whole green and fresh. <laughs> Super fresh, the strong, fresh lemon taste. The juice berry goes super well with this. Just the gooseberry brings out the freshness. The mountains, they don't need to clear the water, they don't need to filter the water. The water comes out from the mountains, through the rivers, caviar emulsion, and then back in cabbage and cucumber. On top, salted coriander seeds. We salted them this summer. You can eat it with your hands. Oyster, cucumber, and coriander seeds. Eat it with my hands. How is it? The oyster. You almost feel like you forgot about the oyster, but then it comes back to life from the sea. Just melt it together with the cucumber. Usually, the oyster, you just eat it. You don't really need to chew it, but for the cucumber. So, you have to pay attention to the real taste of the oyster. So for that we use Zipok Tong. Zipok Tong. Do you know that's a small berry? Yeah, yeah. A lot of citrus. A little bit of a grape will give the sweetness. And then some pumpkin seeds. Roasted in the oven. We give it the inside the juice to give the sweetness. To give the warm flavor to the juice. It's so pretty, the, the sauce. The sauce, yeah. It's like a picture. It's like what people do with the oil picture. Yeah. Or we have a piece of mackerel. The mackerel is a cube. So we put some salt and sugar for five hours around. And then the salt and sugar took all the juice out from the mackerel and give it more texture. On the top of that, we have some fresh wasabi from Iceland. Then some vegetation and slice of pear. And then the sauce is made with the horseradness and some dough. Uh, the sea bug goose taste is very special. It's super good because the apple has been roasted and then there's some fried apples that has been done to put the juice. So you can taste all of those. Next one is make with the 
Women who spell it and then some camel mask. What we do, yes, we take the gooseberry and then we put it in a vacuum bag, 10% of sugar inside, then we vacuum it, 10% of air inside. If you do that, then you're gonna start a fermentation process. And then you keep it for two to three weeks. Then we open it up, take all the juice out, just press it out from the gooseberry. And then we just cook it up. Just if you have some bacteria inside, that's gonna kill it. And then we infuse it with chamomile tea. So we have more acidity to the gooseberry, but it still have some drops. Just listen to it. <laughs> so much effort put into it. Thank you. The first fermented the gooseberry, then we need to cook it, and then infuse with chamomile tea. Just pairing inside. Almost as the same amount of effort that they need to put into it, and it has to go well with the menu as well. So, the chamomile tea flavor comes first, and you take the gooseberries. It's our sourdough bread, and instead of water, we use beer. We use a Danish beer called Sketch, which is a porter. There's a five different kind of flour in it. And we brush it with duck fat so it gets nice and crispy. And then we serve it with our homemade butter and we let it ferment for two days so it has this acidity. And then we have a little pepper board to roll it on so it gets these small bites. It is cloud of face pear which uh, has been infused uh, with Dr. pine vinegar and tarragon oil. Uh, afterwards, it's get a grill on, on a yakitori grill, so it gets a nice grill and smoky flavor. Inside the pear, you'll find a generous amount of the uh, sister caviar from the sea. Then the pear is covered in a sauce based on spinach and uh, cabbage juice, and the stripes you see on top is uh, black sesame and creme fresh. It's an actual pear. So pretty. It and then the caviar is, is It's super nice. It's still tasty. Here, the pear is so well with the caviar. It's just like those, some of the dishes, they take care of you in a subtle way. Afterwards, you feel like your heart and soul is warm and complete. This is one of those dishes. So it's like a steam from uh, the island of desert and island in the north of Denmark. Uh, it's known for making the best langoustine in Denmark. So we uh, fry it and we're serving it with a beurblanc. Beurblanc, a classic French sauce. It a twist on it. And it's a Japanese twist. So it's with katsuboshi, smoked sugar flakes, and pansu. Citrus. Yeah, it smells very good. It's a pan fried, and then they have this uh, traditional French sauce, and they make a Japanese twist on it. Super good. Very good mix of the seafood and the sauce itself, because ponzu is a little bit of citrus taste. So they balance out together, and the gusting itself is it's pan fried. It's the right amount of crispiness. A simple one because we use some carrots, red currant, and then we use some rose hip roses. Red currant is a small berry, small, small berry uh, with a lot of acidity and sweetness inside. I like the color of it. It's carrots, red currant, and rose hip. It has some sweetness from the carrots and then there's this thing that's going to be from red currant. It's a small kind of berry. Yeah, and I can smell some rose. It's a very well balanced taste. Because usually when you think of carrot juice, it's very strong with the carrot. But I think the red currant balance out all the carrot taste. So the next dish you're having a shawanushi made from a fermented white asparagus juice. Yes. We uh, top it with a scallop, small pieces of uh, peeled walnut. We have put it into walnut oil. Then we have a cheese foam. It's topped with uh, some more walnut oil. And to finish it off, we have here white truffle. We have here a white truffle from Isteria in Croatia. It is very uh, fragrant, as you might uh, be able to tell, and very delicious. Yeah, it's, it's, it smells very good. The scallop was one, small, beautiful. They put a lot of truffle on it. Oh, it's so nice. 
The scallop is so sweet, very smooth in your mouth. It goes really, really well with the bones, the walnuts, and the sambal. It just it's such a harmony. Very nice. I wish that it tastes like quinoa. Really? Because quinoa have some earthiness inside and then have a lot of sherry flavor. So what we do is we take the beetroot because beetroot have the earthiness and then a lot of sherry. So I'm a plain gooseberry to give the acidity to it. So this one I have beetroot and cherry. They said it's going to mimic the quinoa in red wine. It looks like red wine too. Quinoa usually has some of the earth taste, a little bit of like acidity. Because I love beetroot, so I really like this. It's the right amount of acidity. So we're halfway through the 19 courses, so it's a good way to wake up. So, next uh, serving video is our sweet bread from uh, Danish beef. Do you know what this is? Sweet bread? Sweet bread is the heart of cow. From beef, something that is inside all of the mammifers. If you have two kinds of uh, beef bread, one is inside of the neck, and one is inside of the uh, yeah, yeah, heart. Yeah, yeah. The ones you use is the ones close to the heart. To the heart, yes. Uh, no, no, because it's, uh, it's a really delicate taste, and it's not something so So let's go back to us. So, our idea is to have a really uh, intense hay taste. So, I will smoke the sweet bread with a little bit of uh, hay. And previously, the sweet bread was infused in a really cage to young. While we are waiting the smoking process, I will leave the sauce and a little bit of a fresh lemon verbena. The sauce is more like a bouillon than a sauce in a textured way. Is based in a really light thin bouillon and a bit of celery and cheese. So just press it a bit. It's close. Well, now I should be enough. Okay. Oh, nice. Okay. This is the lemon glass. Lemon verbena. Lemon. Enjoy. It's sweet bread. I've searched online, it's very high quality and rare. It's a material that you usually find in restaurants. It's a very rich in texture. It's for the sauce, I balance it out very well. Let me make my mind. Just balance out the juice very well too. I find it very. It's not the first time I taste it, so I, I like this one compared to the previous one. Maybe because the way they do it, taste and everything. Yeah, very balanced. Next serving, we have um, inside the onion, broad made of banjo and egg. It's like onion soup inside the onion. So you can just take the lid, lid off and just grab the onion and drink it. There is on the side a brioche, season it with uh, set mask. You can just have a bite or eat it like that or dip it there. But please don't eat the onion or the leaves. Drink it the onion. Famous dish, the onion soup inside onion. I thought this on the Michelin star guy and then I booked this restaurant. You still have money to drink the soup. It's called Bouillon. This is a Bouillon. Cube wash with mushroom. The onion soup is a combo, it's very special, especially when it's inside of the onion. Then they have like grilled it has brought out the onion taste. Is it the same? Nope, the new one. Did you enjoy the beef juice? Yes, I love the beef juice. So the next one is made with the blueberry, and then we have some aronia berry inside. Aronia berry is a berry that Tastes like blueberry and black currant. That is the thing with aronia berry, and it have a lot of tannins too. So when you taste it, you can taste it here like a strong red wine because of the tannins inside. And we have some tarragon inside to give the licorice flavor. Mm -hmm. We're having a, our dear. It comes from very close to here. It's from Vestama. 
like a few kilometers deep here, has been uh, glazed with a black garlic paste. Then on top of that is a mix of uh, roasted uh, lardo and kale. Then it's covered by a red pointed cabbage and a green pointed cabbage. And the sauce we are using is made out of a venison stock and a onion juice. It must be very gamey then. Because oh yes. I think this is one of the fine deer with Cabbage. It's actually very good. I think the meat itself. It's a little bit more creamy than the usual, but I, I don't really find that very strong, which is very good for me. Especially when you eat it with cabbage, it balances it out very well. Chamomile granita, with white chocolate foam okay. in the bottom. Then we have the chamomile ice, the Carrots. white currant. Uh, white currants? Yes, the, what's the name? Uh, I think it's a current that gives the this ice flake acidity to this dessert. Clean balance. White ice cream is also a little bit of like creamy as well, so it's a very good balance. This one is my favorite one. It's made with a base of the raspberry, a red bush from South Africa. We have a lot of lemon flavor, vanilla flavor. And then we take some orange peel, lemon peel, walnut leaf, poi bush tea. Poi bush tea. Yeah. And then some uh, thyme. Take everything, just infuse inside the base, make the make of uh, raspberry tea. And infuse it for just four hours. I see. It's raspberry and poi bush tea. Yes, I can smell it. <laughs> this one is very nice. They gave me. Oh. So here we have our plum dessert. So in the bottom you will find fresh plum bulas in a roasted puree. On top of that we have put a mousse that's made from the small nut that's inside the plum kernel. This mousse is uh, covered in a gel made from umebushi. Then we have a sauce that's uh, made from roasted plums. We have two oils, a wood broth oil and then a black currant wood oil. Yeah, the dessert is a plum It's a marinated in malt syrup and vanilla and then it's dried, it's marinated again and uh, we do that over and over again. It's kind of a root fruit, I think. Yeah, exactly. It's kind of a root fruit and then it's peeled. Yeah, so you can just eat it like it is uh, with your hands. Thank you, Philippe. I have for you our frozen canale. It's a small plate. It's a frozen canale. Frozen canale. How did you do that? We bake a canale cake, a big one, and we make a creme anglaise. A cream. We blend the two together, shoot it in a liquid nitrogen, in a canale mold, and then you have the shape. And then underneath is a small bit of hazelnut praline, and the plate next to it is a malt cone filled with chocolate ganache, and on top is a small uh, edible pine cone. You can take it with your fingers. Frozen canale. <laughs> It doesn't take me long to feel like I'm very comfortable here. Very good experience. And maybe a couple of